Hello, welcome to another episode on uh, Own or Disown. And uh, today I took the plunge, it's like Christmas. I uh, took the plunge and got the Galaxy Note 7. Now I've been a avid user of my uh, Galaxy Note 3 for, well, since it came out, so it must be about three years ago. And you know what? I mean, it's still a great phone. And I, you know, Note 4 came out, the 5. Uh, I like the idea of the removable battery, having a uh, memory card. It was fast enough for me, and uh, I couldn't see the point in uh, in switching until the Note 7 came out. And I, I made this video because I thought, well, it might be interesting for people who are looking to see, is it worthwhile switching? If you're on the, uh, the 4 and 5, perhaps, you know, it might, might not be uh, so clear for you guys. But for the Note 3, you think it's three years, it's a... $800 phone or so, it's expensive. So, you know, it's, um, uh, are the features worthwhile upgrading for? So I'm going to uh, show you a little bit what's inside the box and then go through some of the, the, the features which may perhaps make it worthwhile and uh, just do a summation at the end. So hope you enjoy it. Thank you. All right, so I just want to show you what is in the box. You have uh, the uh, welcome pads and uh, instructions and everything going through uh, how to operate the uh, the phone. You get uh, a nice pair of uh, Samsung uh, earbuds. You get this uh, very interesting tool. Um, this tool is used to uh, open up the uh, SIM card uh, tray. Uh, well, it's actually a combo SIM card tray and uh, memory card. So you pop that in there and uh, out it pops. It's a very useful tool, that. Um, then you get a couple of adapters. You get uh, a USB-C to uh, a USB 3.0 uh, adapter. Great for connecting uh, various peripherals. And you also get uh, a USB-C to uh, micro USB port. Again, great for perhaps connecting uh, legacy chargers and uh, other peripherals. So I like that. I'm glad that's in the box. That's very good, that. You uh, also get this uh, interesting thing. It puzzled me at first. It looks like a pair of tweezers. Um, inside of it, you've got uh, some uh, some spare nibs for the S Pen. If you look closely, you get about uh, about half a dozen of them, and you use the uh, the this clasp thing to uh, pull it out. And uh, that's nice. It's good to have that in there. And you get your SIM card. Mine's a T-Mobile uh, SIM card, um, so that comes in the box. Uh, a back that goes on the back of the phone, and of course. The phone itself. I've gone for the uh, the blue type there, so that's very nice. Hope that helps. Moving on to uh, the features next. So before you uh, make your upgrade decision, you'll probably want to look at the specs. And probably most important to you are uh, a couple of things. Probably um, size. Um, how wide is it? Is it easier to hold? Um, also uh, looking at the uh, battery life. Um, Three and a half thousand milliamp ba battery for the uh, Note 7. Um, to uh, 3,200 milliamp in the Note 3, but the Note 7 is pushing more pixels. It's put, uh, pushing 580 uh, ppi uh, versus uh, 388 ppi. So, what effect will that have? Um, also, very important uh, is camera. Um, you want it to be good in low light, in particular. Um, so that's something to to consider. And you may want to also uh, the speaker. How does that compare? And I think probably one of the most important ones, is it going to be faster? Are you going to be bogged down? So um, I'm going to be taking a look at that as well. Here I test the speed, opening six apps in succession and then uh, reopening them again in the opposite direction. And just measure the time it takes. So we have the Note 7 on the left and the Note 3 on the right. In order for this to be a good representation on whether it's worth the upgrade from the Note 3, um, we used uh, the Galaxy Smart Switch to transfer all my 200 apps and other rubbish that was on my phone over three years of use directly over to the new uh, Note 7. So this is not a fresh Note 7. It's full of the same rubbish that I had on my Note 3. So uh, let's see who wins. The Note 3 is 33% slower than the Note 7. I think that is worth upgrading for. 
So waterproofless, that's an important feature. And uh, Samsung is selling this that uh, you could probably use this at the pool to take photographs with your of your kids and uh, also uh, take notes in the rain so uh, it's ip68 so it should be able to withstand um, water one and a half meters deep for about 30 minutes so i decided to uh, let's throw it under the tap and uh, see if we can uh, uh, still make it work and uh, and uh, write on it so here we go what you find is uh, running water uh, makes the screen flip all over the place and uh, it's very hard to write notes uh, when it's, uh, uh, it's it's raining on it. I don't think that's a, a practical thing at all. I mean, you can make some scribbles, um, but uh, to try and write anything coherently when it's uh, raining on it is difficult. The screen keeps getting activated. But it does work underwater. Uh, one thing I did test was uh, actually see if I can uh, do a Skype conversation with the phone underwater. And uh, although my... Uh, my brother could uh, see something that the, the Wi-Fi signal cut out, so Wi-Fi doesn't go through water seemingly. Next up are speakers. How did a speaker sound on the uh, Note 7? Let's find out. The speakers uh, topped out around about 81 decibels, which I don't think is too bad at all. It certainly gets the job done. Let's see how the cameras compare on the Note 3 and the Note 7, particularly low light performance. Here we have on the left the Note 7 and on the right the Note 3. Big difference in low light performance. When we go to uh, still picture, the same. Note 7 on the left, Note 3 on the right, big difference. So charging. The phone comes with a USB-C port for quick charging. It is uh, multi-directional, so you can uh, put the cable in um, both ways, which is great because uh, regular micro USB, many a time in the dark, it's, fi it's difficult to find which way it uh, it goes. So uh, I do I do like that. It also comes with wireless Qi charging. Just uh, put it on your uh, Qi charger mat next to your uh, work desk, for instance, and uh, there it goes and charges up quickly. In my experience, uh, charging through the USB-C, it uh, charges about 1% uh, per minute, that's with the phone on, and uh, with the phone off, it'll charge so much quicker, um, so it's, it is really handy. Um, battery life, I would get uh, very heavy usage, uh, about 20-25% uh, at the end of the day, normal usage around about 40-50%, to 50%. so not bad at all. So the Note 7 has a quite a few options to uh, secure entry to your phone. Um, password, PIN number, uh, also your fingerprints, say uh, that's an excellent fingerprint reader. Um, you can do multiple fingers. But it also has an iris scanner, which is quite uh, bespoke to this phone, I think. Um, but it does have a few things which uh, cause com concern. Uh, you can't use protection films or tempered glass. It may cause the... Uh, um, the iris recognition LED not to turn off uh, even when it's uh, closed, so that uh, seems daft. And on the right, um, it uh, mentioned that uh, you uh, can't uh, wear glasses or contacts when uh, when wearing it, so I can't see uh, the point of that either. Um, I wear glasses, so I certainly won't be using it. Also on the subject of security is the secure folder that comes with it. Um, you open that up, and it uh, basically comes uh, like a, a lock folder where you input your password. Obviously, you use a different password to your phone. And uh, you can put photos, documents, whatever you like in there uh, to uh, keep them safe. I think that's quite a good, uh, good option. S Pen. The reason why, uh, you know, you, most people probably want to buy the Note is for the, uh, the S Pen functionality. It uh, does pop in to a little holder here. It's spring-loaded compared to having a little groove to pull out. Uh, I did have one occasion where it got stuck in the bottom there and I had to get a knife to uh, to pull it out, which is a bit worrying. Um, I thought the spring had gone, but fortunately it hadn't. So, but when you do pull it out, you're greeted with uh, you know six icons, which you can configure in the, in the settings to what you want on there. Um, so there's some useful ones on here. Um, magnify. Uh, you, uh, you 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 press that and uh, it you know magnifies what's on the screen like that. So that's quite useful. 
To get to the functions, just press the pen symbol, and uh, if you click on glance, it opens up a thumbnail within an application, and uh, if you uh, hover your uh, pen over it, it uh, opens it up again. So that's a pretty useful function, I think. Um, other features, let's have a look. We've got to translate. It's quite self-explanatory, translating uh, the words. Um, screen right, right on the screen like that. All right, so let's uh, discard uh, that. You can share it, you can save it, discard it. You got smart select, so you can select an area of the screen like that if you want. You can extract the text. And you can share it, you can draw on it if you wanted to, like that. Um, so that can be useful. That uh, useful um, for, uh, you know, if you're wanting to uh, a company website and you want to make some notes on a particular uh, company, that type of thing. So one killer feature I thought uh, for this, which was available, I think, in the Note 5, um, is that uh, if you're out and about, you can release the pen and you can make notes on the screen. What I liked about the, uh, the Note uh, Seven pen is the button placement primarily. It's uh, further up the pen compared to the Note Three pen, and the Note Three pen I was always like that, and then inadvertently touching that with my thumb. While here, it's further up, far better design. You know, to, uh, that was most annoying with the Note Three pen, I must admit. One feature the uh, Note Seven has and the uh, Note Three didn't is Samsung Pay. You can uh, uh, drag up from the bottom your credit card or debit card which you assign to it um, of course it's secure by uh, using your fingerprint to uh, to log into your, uh, your phone so it should be okay there and also you can uh, remotely uh, disable or deactivate uh, your cards um, should your phone go missing so that's a nice feature one notable mention is the side panel you swipe up from the right hand side and you can have uh, nine different uh, st uh, screens um, first one, uh, they could actually call it uh, Apps Edge is the first one. Um, so you can put your Apps Edge, scroll along, then you can have your People Edge, all your contacts on there. Um, task Edge, um, so your searches and things, and then uh, your various places you want to go to on uh, My Place Edge. Um, then uh, you've got uh, various ones for scanning, video calling. Um, then you can configure uh, news articles, whether through uh, Yahoo and uh, I think uh, C CNN. I think uh, I think I like that one. That's that's nice. Um, quick tools as well. So I've got my uh, compass on there, and that's uh, that's quite handy. And then your, your calendar, like that weather. Now whether these are uh, any better than actually just uh, you know clicking on an uh, icon on the front face of your phone, uh, it's open to debate. But uh, still. It's fairly nice to have and worth mentioning. There's some other notable features I'd like to mention. Um, there's a direct call, so that uh, when you uh, put the phone to your head, it automatically answers the uh, the call. I think that is uh, pretty sweet. And uh, also smart capture, so uh, dragging your, your hand along the side of the screen captures uh, the footage. One last uh, option I noticed uh, was the blue uh, light filter. And I think this could help reduce your eye strain when you're reading a book at night and uh, most more and more people are, are doing that now and it's less likely to uh, keep you awake. That's certainly nice. Here I show two video functions. On the left is uh, fast forwarding and uh, volume adjustment by touching the screen and on the right is uh, taking a, a GIF or GIF six second clip um, which you can then share or save uh, to people. Both very nice. And finally, what I wanted to show you was the screen brightness comparison between the Note 7 and the Note 3. Here, both are set at max brightness, and uh, I must admit, uh, I think they're both similar. The only difference you can see is the uh, increased clarity on the uh, Note 7, but both seem to be equally bright to me. So I think both will be equally as good in, uh, in bright daylight, which is nice. I like that. So to conclude, the Note 7 is a smart, elegant phone, has upgradable memory, it's waterproof, it has some compelling functions, it has good security with fingerprint iris scanner, it's easy to use in one hand with the edge-to-edge -edge display, it's got good battery life, it's fast, I think it's a good upgrade to the Note 3. If you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and see you next time.